folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I am going to be sharing a brand new tutorial I have not shared before. Uh, we're going to be making acorns and this is going to have a template for my website. I will be linking to that. We're also going to be using some new, a new tool. We're going to be using a, uh, a crimper, a paper crimper. So we'll, we'll play with that as well and also we're going to be using some multicolored swirls which are really fun so we're gonna be playing with texture we're gonna be playing with color this is gonna be a fun one first things first you want to gather your supplies for this acorn project I have made a template and that will be available through a link in the description box I'm also going to be using three different colors of brown quilling paper I have a chocolate brown from Craft Harbor I also have light brown from Quilled Creations and then a tan that is from Craft Harbor Papers as well. You're also going to need some wax paper and a cork board, pins, a needle tool, tweezers, some white glue in a bottle, and then also a quilling crimper, which is a really great tool if you haven't picked one of those up. It's only a few dollars and I'll link to that down below. After you print out your template, you're going to want to cut that so that it fits your work board and I'm just going to be doing one at a time so I'm going to cut mine right in half and then cut it down to size so it fits on my square work board. And if you're new to quilling, the reason that I am putting the wax paper on top is because one, it's clear so I can see my template underneath and quill right on top of it. And number two, my glue won't stick to the wax paper. So once I'm all done, I can peel it all off and I'm ready to go. The first part of the acorn that we're going to start building is going to be the acorn cap. And I'm kind of speeding through this part here because I've demonstrated this quite a few times. But what I did is take a piece of the chocolate brown. This strip is about 24 inches long, I believe, or 22 inches. I folded it in half and I put some glue down one side of that half. And I'm going to uh, sandwich all that back together again to make a double strip. And I've made it a video about why I do this for my on edge quilling. Uh, in the past and I'm going to link to that right now but the short version is because it makes a really strong a little bit thicker strip so it's great to do outlines and what I'm actually going to do here is use this strip right in my my crimper my this little paper crimper that I have again it only cost a few dollars I think I, I got it on Amazon I'm going to link to that like I said it can definitely handle this double strip and also that means it could handle some cardstock if you were using cardstock strips for this too. It'll work just fine. So I put that little handle on and then you can see that makes the wheels turn and that is what's going to crimp the brown paper. I think I ended up needing about three of these, these double thick strips. So you go ahead and make around three of those or make them as you need if, if that's up to you. Once the glue dries in the middle, you're going to feed it through your paper crimper and it comes out the other side with a little bit of a textured edge. So again we're using this crimped paper to make the acorn, uh, the acorn cap which is the top of the acorn. So first thing we're going to do is use our little bottle of glue and we're going to do the outline of the acorn cap. So I'm actually going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to add a little bit of glue right along the edge where the acorn and the cap meet just to give my paper a little bit of an anchor point to to rest on. So you can see I just used my hand just to kind of give it the basic shape and then I'm going to let it sit there for a second and I am not afraid to use pins to keep my paper straight, so that's what I'm going to do as well.
once I get to the corner of my acorn cap, I'm going to put a pin there and pinch it around the pin and that's going to make that angle really nice and crisp and then I can continue on the top part of the, the acorn cap as well. So again, a couple more dots of glue and then wrap the paper around using my fingers and some pins to keep it straight. And there's a really good example in that shot right there. You can see that I am not exactly on the line. It's okay. It'll all work out in the end. So this template is just that. It's just an idea of where to put your strips. This is not like an exact, an exact science in this project. So again, a little bit of glue, a little bit of pins, wrap the paper around the top of the acorn cap. And then once I get to where the paper is going to meet the end, I'm going to snip off the excess and let that dry. After the outline dried for a little bit, I'm going to be using the same type of crimped paper and the same color to make some lines on the inside of the cap just to give the illusion of the kind of bumpy texture that an acorn cap has. So instead of completely filling up this cap with little tiny coils or something else, just I'm just using, like I said, the crimped paper just to give it the feeling of of that same that same texture so I I line up what I think is about the right amount and then I give a little snip check it again to see if it fits and if I need to make adjustments and if you need to use some pins to keep your um, these strips separate you can always do that as well The next part of the acorn we're going to work on is the stem and I'm going to start by doing the outline of one side plus a little loop there. It's going to end up being a scroll which means you are going to take your noodle tool and roll one end of a, um, this is a chocolate brown paper and without going to the end, see I didn't even measure this so I can't even give you an idea of how long of a strip this one was. I just rolled a bit what I thought was going to fill up that circle and then I'm going to line it up with the um, the template and see how it fit. And I actually ended up judging this one pretty well. Um, I'm just going to add a dot of glue between the coil and the rest of the strip and then a little bit to where it would meet the cap of the acorn. And that's about it. That's a really easy way to give the, again, this is all about illusion, give the illusion that the acorn um, stem is three-dimensional. So let that dry for a minute. And again, I'm a fan of pins to make things stay a little bit quicker. That just works for me. I know some people are not fans, but to each their own. So little bit of pins to keep everything in place. And then I'm going to go to the other side and use another small strip of that chocolate brown paper and put that right along that little part of the outline that's left. I'm going to curl it with my fingers just to give it more or less that same shape and hold it up with some tweezers, see how it fits. Uh, pretty long. Need to make that a little bit shorter. Line it up again, just about right.
all that's left for the stem is to line up some straighter pieces of quilling paper. I'm not going to be doing any rolls or anything to fill this in. I'm just going to be using straight pieces of both the chocolate brown and then also the light brown. So starting with the darker color, I'm just going to measure and glue some straighter strips, like I said, mimicking the shape of the, the sides of the, of the stem. And again, in the interest of time, we're going to speed this along a little bit. And I'm just now, just keep uh, measuring and gluing in these straight strips. I probably ended up using, I'm not sure, maybe less than 10 just to fill in this space. Uh, after I put in a couple strips of the dark chocolate brown, I'm going to be using some strips of the lighter, um, that middle shade, that light brown, just to give the illusion of a three-dimensional stem. It wouldn't be the same color if light was hitting it all the way across. The colors would change. It would be lighter in the center and darker on the edges. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. If your stem looks a little bit of a gluey mess like mine sort of does there, uh, you can use a small brush to brush some of that glue away. Or if you can also use your needle tool, can work as well. It just kind of just pulls some of that just out of the way. It'll pick up a little bit of it, just enough to make it a little bit neater as it dries. All right, this is the fun part. This is how we're gonna fill up the bottom of the acorn. And we're gonna fill it up with a few different swirls. And if you haven't made quilling paper swirls before, I'm gonna to link to that post. It's super important you start there. Swirls are um, essentially coils that are made of multiple strips. And for this case, we're gonna be using all three of the colors. I'm using two strips of the dark brown, two strips of the medium, the light brown it's called and then one strip of the tan and I line them all up this this section is about four inches or so and I glue them all a tiny bit on one end and then I'm gonna wrap them around my needle tool again if you have not watched the video about swirls you're gonna want to watch that first it's gonna go into a lot more detail about what I'm doing and why but this is just a real quick real quick overview instead of making this this video you know, an hour long. So this is going to be my first, um, my first swirl. I'm s rolling it in a way that the dark brown is on the outside of that coil. So once I move my fingers here, you can see all the colors there together, all those browns, and you can see the dark brown again is what's on the outside. I'm going to use this first one on one side and then to fill in that little dimple on the bottom of the acorn. And so I'm going to start, I'm going to pull my coil out a little bit just to open it up slightly and then I'm going to start pulling those strips to open this up. I also wanted to curl one end of it um, because you can see how I'm going to place it in there in a moment. I didn't want it just stuck up against one side of the acorn. I'm going to give this a little bit of life, a little bit of, of negative space. We're not going to fill this entire thing full of quilling paper. So I determined that that coil is more or less the size of the dimple where I wanted it to sit. Now I have to make sure that it stays in place. So I add a tiny drop of glue between every one of those strips. Um, right around where the coil meets. And you can see I got some glue on the strips themselves there. I should have been more careful. This does come back and sort of bite me in the end a little bit later. I should have wiped that off. So you want to avoid getting any glue 
on the rest of the strips for now. So because I put that glue there, that coil is going to stay right there. And then I'm going to put a pin right in the very center of that coil, right at the base where I want that to stay. And then another pin or two just to keep it all from moving around. And you can see that I have left the top open. I haven't done anything with that yet. Because what I want to do is I want to have the rest of these strips kind of fanned out in a way that's going to fill up some of this acorn. So what I did there first is I had one going to the side and where it was going to meet a, uh, the edge of the acorn, I went ahead and just snipped that off. And then I moved on to the next one. And I got an idea of where it was going to hit the edge of the acorn and then snipped it off. Using some pins, I can get an idea of how this is going to look later. And there's the next one. It's going to meet right in the corner where the, um, the acorn cap meets the rest of it. And then I, same thing, snipped it off. And I keep going through the rest of the strips wherever I want them to sit. I'm going to cut off the excess and then pin them into place for later. So there you can see a pretty good way to fill up a good amount of space with just a, uh, a swirl of quilling paper. And I'm just going to adjust it. This is where I was talking about I accidentally put that glue and I shouldn't have. It's sort of bugging me how that part's a little straight there. But I'm going to make some adjustments later on and that's going to be a little bit less noticeable. So hopefully you won't have that same problem because you are going to be a lot more careful with your glue than I was. So because of all that fussing around, that changed some of my uh, my strips. So I'm just going to have to make some adjustments there as well. But when you are ready, you are going to add a little bit of glue where your quilling paper strip meets uh, anything that you already have. So anything that meets that acorn cap, I'm going to add a tiny dot of glue. And because the pins are already there keeping it straight, that should be fine to keep that all in place and then we're going to move on to the next next swirl. For the next swirl I used the same colors, two of the dark chocolate brown, two of the light brown and one of the tan. I lined them up in the same way and I rolled it exactly the same way with the dark brown on the outside. This time though I let it open up a little bit more. I pulled it out that coil out a little bit more. And I'm also going to pull on the strips to open that up a good amount. You can see here I just pull each strip one at a time. Again, if you need a refresher on the swirls, you're going to want to go back and watch that video. It gives you all the detail. And once I get it to a nice open shape there, I want to line it up to see if it fills about that much of the acorn. If I'm happy with that, I'm going to start adding a little bit of glue between the strips again to keep that shape in place. Even better. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my glue so I don't end up getting frustrated later on. And a little bit of dot between every strip right at the base of the uh, the swirl and that's what's going to keep that shape in place. Tweezers are always helpful as a little clamp and after a second or two that should be set enough where you can start getting it in place. So for this one I kind of want it right on top of the bottom but then it's going to fill in most of the other side of the acorn. 
and I'm going to use my needle tool to just curve the ends of that coil, or the, sorry, the ends of the swirl back the other way. And then the same process that I did before is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to pin that, that top of the swirl in place and then I'm going to start moving the strips around and trimming them once I'm happy with where they're going to meet the top of the acorn. Now I know it might seem a little scary just to start like snipping these strips off wherever you think they might gonna, you know, they're gonna meet the, the rest of the acorn, but the good thing is you haven't actually glued anything down yet. So if they end up being not the right size, you can go ahead and take the whole take the whole swirl off and do it again. Or sometimes every once in a while mine are a little bit too short. And what I end up doing is just taking a tiny strip of that same color paper and just making like a little bridge just to get it to meet the other side. And you can't even see it. It ends up being just fine. So don't panic too much about it. So it's all just paper. Anyway, so once I had that in place, um, those end of those of the swirl where I liked it, I put some glue down and then I ended up um, gluing the two swirls in place where they met each other. Next thing we're going to do is do the outline of the bottom of the acorn. Uh, now before when I had messed around with this first swirl, some of my strips kind of came outside of the, the template area. So I'm going to go ahead and snip off, snip off those. No big deal. Things change. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the outline. And I have another double strip made. So the same idea of in the beginning of the video where I had that long, that long strip and I folded it in half and added some glue and just made it a little bit sturdier. Did that again. Uh, this time I did not crimp it. This is just going to be a, a straight piece. And first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue to any of the edge of the template and also any of the strips where it would have met um, the outline. So any place where this outline is going to touch, I added a little bit of glue. Curving it just to soften it up a little bit and then I can start attaching. So right there to the end with another pin to keep everything together and a little bit more pins just to keep the shape. And I'm going to start wrapping it around the rest of the, uh, the bottom of the acorn. And once you meet the other side, you're going to snip off any excess, add some glue, and pin into place where it hits the other part of the acorn cap. Don't forget to brush off any excess and you should be good to go for the outline. Once I took all the pins out, you can really see how this uh, acorn is starting to take shape. But I'm not happy with the little bit of a gap that I have between uh, the two 
uh, edges of the swirls and the the edge of the um, the acorn. So what I'm going to do is just take another small strip of chocolate brown and just fill that in just a little bit. Does it have to be jam packed? Just like the rest of this design, it's pretty open and airy, a lot of negative space. So we're just going to use a little bit of a strip and measure it with our fingers and then glue it into place. That looks much better already. And now we're gonna fill in that center part of the acorn. But now we're gonna do something different with our swirls. We're gonna be doing a different color combination. We're working on having lighter colored this time. So now I have three strips of the tan and two strips of the light brown. None of the, the dark brown at all. And I rolled it away so that I have the, the tan on the outside and I'm going to figure out exactly where I want to place this in the inside of the acorn and maybe curl the ends a little bit. Again, everybody's acorn is going to look different. Um, I'm not using any exact measurements on this. I'm not giving you any like real firm directions like you wanna put this exactly here and measure this and cut there because everybody is gonna look a little bit different. It's really hard to make your, uh, your swirls exactly the same size if you haven't been doing them for a really long time. So in order not to frustrate anybody, this is a very like open project. It's more about playing with color and texture than it is about getting the exact right measurements of your quilling. So once I have this, like. I really fanned this one out because I wanted it to take up a good amount of space on the top there. And I'm going to pin it in place. And just like I did the last two, I'm going to cut and glue and pin the rest of the strips in place. So once I have that part finished, I only have a little bit more to go. Um, like I said, I don't want to completely fill this up. We're leaving it really open and airy, but I do want to stick with the lighter colors for the rest of the quilling. I'm going to add just a little bit more just to really uh, reinforce those swirls. But then I lost a bunch of footage of baking this this acorn, these last two little swirls, all the filming I did of making them disappeared, but I wanted to make sure that I redid how I made them just because it's a little bit different. So I'm going to be using the same colors that I did for the last one, just the two lighter shades, three pieces of the tan, and then two pieces of the light brown. Stack them all up so that the uh, tan is going to be on the outside. But, I was, again, going a little faster because you've seen this a few times now. So, stacking them all up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue. And then I'm going to start rolling it right away before the glue dries. And again, whoop, not that way, this way. Right? I want the tan to be on the outside. So, the difference here is that when I'm done with the coil, I barely want it to open up. This is the one on this side that I'm doing right now. So I'm just measuring it there because I want to make sure it's more or less the same size and you know what I'm talking about. And this time I don't need the extra strips to be fanned out in any way. I actually don't want those at all. So what I'm going to start doing is cutting them, each one a little bit longer than the last one, 
and that is what is going to make the end of this swirl. It's a little bit different than the last ones. I'm gonna get some little scissors and just snip. Snip, snip all the way down, all five strips. Each one's a little bit longer than the last. And then I'm gonna add some glue between all of them. You can see how they're sort of shingled there. The reason you wanna do that is so that it's not really solid and blunt and hard to blend in to something next to it. This way it's a little bit more of a smooth transition uh, going from thick to thin. Just makes it look a little bit less just chunky. course this ended up being a little bit too long so I did end up having to just cut it straight across but because it was it would have been meeting um, right on top of another coil it, it probably wouldn't have made a difference if it wasn't shingled it was all blunt across but if I had the original footage it would have looked a little bit different but you're gonna want to do the same exact thing for that little tiny swirl on the other side yep and then it's gonna end up being put in just about that much smaller but same same exact process and you can see the reason I did five swirls is because one two three four five is because odd numbers are just more pleasing to the eye when you are doing anything in design this isn't just quilling this is anything so just bear that in mind when you're making your own acorn aim for an odd number and when you are happy with your work and everything is set and dry, you're gonna use your needle tool right around the underneath between your quilling and your wax paper and just give a little bit of wiggle. That's gonna separate, don't worry about that, that can all be fixed. You're gonna separate um, your quilling from the wax paper. So I'll have to go back and add a little bit of glue where one of my, uh, my crimped pieces came off of one side. I don't know if anybody caught that, but not a big deal. Don't forget that you can always snip off any glue that is noticeable on the underside. I have a little pair of scissors I use just for this reason. Usually after you mount this on something, you probably won't see most of it, so don't have to go completely crazy with this, but if there's anything sticking along the edges, I definitely try to snip that off. I have a post from last year. I used the same idea of using different colored swirls to make a three-dimensional effect to make this pumpkin. This entire tutorial and uh, template, this one's on my website as well, so I'm gonna link it down below. But just another idea of what you could use with swirls and different colors to make a complete picture. how cute this is all mounted up so simple once you get the hang of the swirls you'll really be having I think a lot of fun with this it doesn't take very long you get to play with color you get to make it look a little bit three-dimensional by putting only the light colors in the center it's just a fun fall project Now, this video is really just meant to be an inspiration video. This is not an exact how-to, which is why I didn't give any precise measurements or anything like that other than just some technique ideas and the template. I really want you to use your creativity on this one and fill up your acorns however you wish. Once you do that, if you can leave me a comment down below and tell me how you did yours, I'd love to hear about them. But in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified next time I put up another quilling video.